we begin with our confession and forgiveness. Let us confess our, confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. We have not lived as your chosen people. We have not loved your daughters and sons. We have not walked in the footsteps of others. We have not followed the servant your son. Sometimes I hate, sometimes I lie, sometimes I waste, sometimes I cheat. We have not lived as your chosen people. We have not loved your daughters and sons. We have not walked in the footsteps of others. We have not followed the servant your son. Sometimes I am selfish, sometimes I am prejudiced, sometimes I am uncaring, sometimes I am destructive. We have not lived as your chosen people. We have not loved your daughters and sons. We have not walked in the footsteps of others. We have not followed the servant your son. Please join me in the words of forgiveness. Even though we are in bondage to sin, there is hope for freedom, not by our own doing, but because we are chosen by God to receive the gift of forgiveness. Through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, we know this is true. Please be seated. The first reading is from Amos chapter 5. Alice, for you desire, for you who desire the day of the Lord, the Lord, why do you want the day of the Lord? It is darkness, not light, as if someone fled from a lion and was met by a bear, or went into the house and rested a hand against the wall and was bitten by a snake. It is not the day of the Lord, darkness, not light, and gloom with no brightness in it. I hate, I despair, your freaks your festivals, and I take no delight in your swallowing assembles. Even through you offer me your burnt offerings and grain offerings. I will not accept them, and the offering of well-being of your faded animals I will not look upon. Take away from me the noise of your songs. I will not listen to the melody of your harps, but I let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. Please join me in reading the songs responsibly as printed in your bulletin. Be pleased, O God, to deliver me. O Lord, make haste to help me. Let those who say to me, Ah, and glow over me, turn back to get because of their shame. But as for me, I am poor and needy. Come to me quickly. O oh God, you are my helper and my deliverer. O oh Lord, do not tarry. Second reading is from Thessalonians chapter 4. But we do not want you to be informed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died, so that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring him those who have died. For this we declare to you by the word that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will by no means precede those who have died. For the Lord himself, with the cry of command, with the archangels call, and with the sounds of God's trumpets, will descend from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be changed up in the Lord's clouds together, with them to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words.
please stand for the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew chapter 25. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. Then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them, but the wise took flasks of oil with them, lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a shout, Look, here is the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will, be, there will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went out to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later the other bridesmaids came also saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. On this first Sunday after, oh, this is not good. On the first Sunday after the presidential election, I assume that some of us come elated, some chagrin, some ambivalent. We learn that as a country, we seem divided as the 10 bridesmaids in the gospel. I believe this is an urgent moment in time, but not because of either our elation or chagrin. It is urgent because the God we encounter through Jesus Christ is always calling us into something new, and that is surely true in this moment. Jesus' parable in Matthew's Gospel could not be timelier. First, let's be clear that this morning's Gospel passage is a parable. It is a story Jesus uses to teach something. So far in his ministry, all of his teaching is somehow about the kingdom of heaven, or reign of God. This parable carries that thread. Sometimes it's okay to allegorize a parable, but most often it is more faithful not to. In other words, we should not assign characters in the parable to people or to members of the Trinity. The reign of God, God's inbreaking, is something to stay awake for, to be prepared for. In previous parables, it was like a pearl or a hidden treasure, yeast. It is surprising and often hidden and always valuable. Other agricultural parables also portray the reign of God as something that grows, that has the potential for abundance. This morning's parable seems to be about a particular kind of waiting and watchfulness. The kingdom of heaven will be like 10 bridesmaids who took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. The 10 seem equal in their response and enthusiasm at first, Ten lamps burning, ten bridesmaids sleeping, ten bridesmaids waking up, hearing the groom arrive, and ten bridesmaids excited to get the wedding started. And then comes the but. But only five had enough oil with them to keep their lamps lit. So while the five who are running on empty go out looking for more oil, the others go into the party and the door is shut behind them. The groom refuses to open up even when they return well supplied with lamps burning, crying, Lord, Lord. The door remains slammed in their faces. This is clearly not any wedding party, nor is this regular lamp oil like a commodity to be traded, sold, gifted, loaned, or bartered. As much as the wise bridesmaids may want to share, they cannot do it. This seems like such a contrast to much of Jesus' teachings about generosity and abundance. But that is not the point of this particular parable. This is about fuel and about waiting. As many who have studied this parable closely realize, this kind of spiritual fuel is not something you can just get from someone else. Just as you can copy a friend's math homework, but not the hours of studying he put in understanding all the steps in the process. Just as a person cannot borrow a scalpel and suddenly embody all surgical knowledge, just as a surgeon herself 
may successfully transplant a heart from one body to another, but can never transfer its original recipient's love for her children, her passion for gardening. There are some kinds of preparation we can only do for ourselves, spiritual reserves that no one else can build up for us. It's something we each have to receive and cherish and deepen in our own souls for ourselves. So this parable impresses upon us the importance and the urgency of being fueled as we wait. As all 10 bridesmaids awaken to realize the time for acquiring oil and building reserves will run out suddenly and unexpectedly. Dark times come into every life and it's in the darkness that we most need the sustenance of the kind of oil Jesus is talking about. Assurance of the abundant promises of God, peace that passes understanding, a depth of hope that can sustain us through the darkness of disappointments and failures, devastating loss and grief, closed doors of all kinds. I've been speaking about this parable in terms of individuals having enough oil, and I certainly believe that's important, but I actually believe the parable is encouraging communities of faith to remain fueled. I do not mean enough savings, enough resources, a big enough building, enough people, I mean the kind of reserves that can only be described relationally. What is our communal relationship with God? In turn, how are our relationships with one another and with our neighbors, even those who voted differently than we did? I would actually contend that Trinity Lutheran's relationships are healthy, and that is one reason why we are weathering the pandemic disruption as well as we are. But as the parable so starkly portrays, we have to stay awake. Complacency is not an option. We, this faith community in Nampa, need hope urgently as the world is experiencing the pandemic. We need peace urgently when we realize our nation is divided by visions of who we are. We will need love urgently when we are afraid. We will need joy urgently when the pain of loss and grief seems never ending. And we never know when we are going to be called into something new. If the election has shown us one thing, it's that we are pretty divided. I also think there is a lot of fear about so many things. And we have a hard time talking across and through the fear and the divide. What is the call of the church in such a time? Perhaps it is to put aside our different political views and keep doing the work of housing and feeding and evangelism. Perhaps it is a call to deepen our relationships with one another and our larger community, to truly hear what our heart's desires for our families and church and country are. I give thanks today that this parable about having enough oil reserves and keeping awake is but one part of the gospel. When we look at Jesus' life, death, and resurrection, we are reminded of the story so foundational to the life of faith. One renowned scholar put it this way, it will be a story not grounded in fear, greed, and violence, but a story that pivots on the generosity, civility, and restorative justice that honors all neighbors, that provides for all the impoverished and neighbors in need. This alternative story is deeply grounded in the gospel but it is not only a gift, it is an assignment. It is a task to be done in the intimate places where we tell our treasured stories, in the marketplaces where we bargain and trade, and in public places where we make policies concerning debt and taxes. This is a time to get our story straight, to encourage that narrative that we have nearly forfeited. The parable ends today with an imperative to keep alert and to be on notice. Why? Because the new world erupts here and there without warning. It is the work of the faithful to watch and to notice. It is the work of the faithful to identify and celebrate wherever it is that new neighborly actions are committed that make all things new. Today in our congregation, we begin our expanded Advent a good time to keep awake and to return to disciplines which will keep our lamp full of oil. Worship, prayer, reading scripture, acts of love and generosity. The last weeks of Advent have us look back on the incarnation, God coming to earth in the human person of Jesus. But the first few weeks of our seven week Advent focus on the future. 
That may sound scary, but it is not. It is perhaps one of our most hope-filled acts. The death and resurrection of Jesus outside of Jerusalem 2,000 years ago calls on us to reimagine the future and to reconsider how we participate in the here and now. As we act out our parts in the unfolding plot of history, we already know how the play will end. Accordingly, we are free to dream what we otherwise might not dare to envision and to work for a reign of peace and justice that the world seems incapable of imagining. Despite the claims of the popular left behind genre of theology, God does not pluck a select group of people from earth, abscond with them to another place and abandon the world. Instead, God comes and dwells with us, swallowing up death forever, bringing joy without end. In the meantime, a period in which we experience God's promised future, already, but not yet fully, we are to live as if God's reign were finally established. In other words, if God's promised future includes the dismantling of hunger, suffering, division, prejudice, and shame, and the dawn of joy and life without end, then we, who are marked with the cross of Christ, boldly need to get on with it. Amen. We're going to read responsibly our hymn of the day by verse. Rejoice, rejoice, believers, and let your light appear. The evening is advancing, and darker night is near. The bridegroom is arising, and soon is drawing nigh. Up, pray, and watch, and wrestle. At midnight comes the cry. Proclaim the bridegroom near. The Lord the sea approaches. Hallelujah is clear. The marriage feast is waiting. The gates wide open stand. Arise, O heirs of glory, the bridegroom is at hand. The saints who here in patience their cross and sufferings bore shall live and reign forever when sorrow is no more. Around the throne of glory, the Lamb they shall behold in triumph cast before him their diadems of gold. Our hope and expectations, O Jesus, now appear. Arise, O sun, so long for. If you want to move around, you can stand up for the statement of faith. Please join me. We believe we are chosen by God, our Creator, to participate in the ongoing work of creation by holding life sacred and being good stewards of God's gracious gifts. We believe we are chosen by Jesus Christ, our Savior, to participate in the ongoing work of spreading the good news of God's saving love and serving others in the name of the Lord. We believe we are chosen by the Holy Spirit, who calls us through the gospel to believe in Jesus Christ, gathers us as a community of believers to worship together and support one another, and enlightens us with gifts of love forgiveness, and everlasting life. We believe the Holy Spirit nourishes our growth, preserves us in faith, and keeps us in God's grace forever. Longing for Christ's reign to come among us, we pray for outpouring of God's power on the church, the world, and all in need. Holy God, rouse us to the deep praise as we gather for worship. Enliven our worship with sincere and heartfelt song. Sustain the work of all church musicians and artists who lead us in praise and prayer. Hear us, O God. Holy Creator, Surprise and delight us with the beauty of the world you have made. Bless the work of landscapers, architects, and artists whose work invites us in, into harmonious living with your creation. Hear us, O God. Holy Judge, let justice roll down like waters over this world. Reign over the courts of every land. 
in the hearts of those who guard the law and those who stand accused of crimes. Be present in cases where we long for both justice and mercy to prevail. Hear us, O God. Holy Companion, console those who feel lonely or abandoned. Share the hours of those who live and eat alone. Comfort those who have few friends or who struggle with their identity and place in this world. Hear us, O God. Holy Protector, be with all observing Veterans Day. Guard the lives of active duty and retired military personnel. Comfort all who mourn those who have died in the line of duty. Heal the wounds, both physical and mental, experienced by service members. Hear us, O God. Holy and Immortal One, we pray in thanksgiving for the lives of all who have died. Remind us of the frailty and shortness of our own lives and inspire us to use them for the building up of your kingdom. Hear us, O God. Receive our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, until that day when you gather all creation around your throne, where you will reign forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. With this bread and cup, we remember your word dwelling among us, full of grace and truth. We remember our new birth in his death and resurrection, we look with hope for his coming. Awaken your people, fill us with your light, bring the gift of peace on earth. All praise and glory are yours, Holy One of Israel, Word of God incarnate, power of the Most High, one God, now and forever. Amen. Gathered together, let us pray as our Lord taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good. All are welcome, for Jesus invites us. The body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you.
God of Stead... Oh. The God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another in accordance with Christ Jesus. Amen. The God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. The God of all grace bless you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thank you, God.